Here is a demo of lemongrass bath bombs. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today's video is super exciting. We're gonna do something different. We are going to make bath bombs like we always do, but today's video, I'm going to be using essential oils. We are gonna be making my lemongrass bath bombs and these bath bombs smell just amazing. They have little calendula petals on top. Essential oils are awesome to use in bath bombs because of the reason why people use bath bombs in the first place and that is to relax and so many essential oils relax and soothe people as soon as they smell them. They are really a great ingredient to use in your bath bombs but there is a right and wrong way to use them and we will go into that in this video today. Hello if you're new here my name is Jerrica and I am the owner and creator of Quench and on this channel I talk all about how I make my products and how I sell them and if that is something that you're interested in please keep watching and now without further ado Let's get into it. So if you're making soap and bath bombs and you wanna use essential oils, you wanna keep in mind the safe usage levels. And the way I figure out the safe usage levels is eocalc.com. And this is a calculator that you can use to input your blends and it will tell you the safe usage for your essential oil and will help you formulate blends that you will use in your products. So once you enter eocalc.com into your search bar, you will land on Modern Soap Making's essential oil calculator. And on this page, you see a lot of different essential oils listed and you can click on these essential oils here on this page to find different blends that the EOCalc will suggest for you. But if you wanna calculate your own blend, there is a tab up here that says calculate usage rate. And that is what I use when I'm coming up with an essential oil blend and I wanna know what the safe usage levels are for my recipe. So I'm gonna click that. And then you can see here how you can input your essential oils that you wanna use in your blend. So using my lemongrass bath bomb as an example, I'm gonna choose lemongrass in the this drop down list and I can see it right here. And because I only use lemongrass in my recipe, I'm gonna enter the percent of that essential oil, which would be 100%. So I'm gonna put 100%. Now, if you were doing a blend, say for example, I wanted to do an orange patchouli blend, and for my orange patchouli blend, I like to use 80% orange essential oils and 20% patchouli oils. I would choose orange essential oil as one of the essential oils in my drop down and input 80 and then I would choose patchouli essential oil as the second one and then input 20. When you're making up your blends, make sure that the percentages add up to 100. So if you scroll down a little bit more, you can enter the amount of product you're making in ounces or grams. I like to use grams. Say for example, all of your ingredients in your recipe amount to about 1,000 grams. You would input 1,000 grams. And when you're coming up with the amount of your recipe, for soap, it's the total amount of oils in your recipe, and for bath bombs, it would be all of the dry ingredients and all of the wet ingredients together. So for example, for me, that would include baking soda, citric acid, all of my oils and all of the dry ingredients that I include. So once you put in the amount of your recipe, you enter whether or not you want it in grams or ounces, and then you're gonna choose the product type. And this drop-down menu lists all of the different types of products that you would be likely creating with your essential oils. So because this is a bath bomb and you're going to be washing it off, I'm gonna choose category nine, which is a wash off product. Now, if you were going to be making a soap, there is actually a category for cold process soap, which falls into the same category as a wash off product. It's really nice how she lists things in the general categories, but also more specific categories to help you guys out. So once you have all of that information inputted, you click give me usage rates. And down here, it'll give you a review on what you yourself have entered into the system. And over here, it's 100% of lemongrass essential oil. So if you scroll down a little bit further, it will show you the usage rates ranging from light to strong. On the light end, it is showing five grams and all the way down to the strong end, it's saying 20 grams. And this calculator is amazing because it will show you whether or not these usage rates are actually safe. If it is green, that means that it's safe and you can use that amount in your recipe. But if any of these amounts have a red background, then it's actually not safe and you should not be using that amount in your recipe at all. So for my recipe for my lemongrass bath bombs, it is all green, we are good to go. I would not be using lemongrass essential oil and anything above 20 grams for my recipe based on this 
calculator. So for today's bath bombs, we are going to be using lemongrass essential oil. We are going to be coloring the main batch of the bath bomb with a yellow dye. And we are also going to be coloring a portion of that bath bomb with apple green dye. And the reason why I don't just do pure yellow is because I try not to make bath bombs just be yellow. <laughs> when you use a bath bomb and it colors the water, I think yellow is one of those colors you don't want your bath water to be for some reason. <laughs> so I try to color it with a little bit of green so that it's more of a greenish yellow as opposed to straight up yellow. And at the very top, we're gonna to be using the tiniest pinch of calendula petals. Now, when I make my essential oil bath bombs, the people that tend to buy them are a little bit older in terms of they are adults. They tend to not be children, so I like to focus less on colors and making the bath bomb produce these crazy brightly colored foam. I want the highlights of the bath bomb to be the essential oil itself. In order to make the bath a soothing experience, I only lightly, lightly color the bath bomb so that when it is used in the water, the foam is only slightly colored and it's not this big explosion of rainbow colors in your face like my other more fruitier scented bath bombs are. And for those of you wondering what's on my head, these are goggles that I got from Uline. I upgraded my old goggles and I got these ones and they provide so much protection. This is going to be great for soaping as well. I think that wearing goggles when making bath bombs is a good idea because a lot of bath bomb mix flies up in your face sometimes and I once got bath bomb mix in my eye and it's a terrible experience just wear some sort of eye protection when you're making your bath bombs and another thing that I got from Yulen that I'm really super excited about are these respirators this will really help protect me from ingredients like SLSA and also even citric acid ingredients that when you inhale it it really irritates your lungs and makes you sneeze that's really not something that you want to be breathing in all the time especially if you're a professional bath bomb maker like I am make sure that you protect yourself this was actually pretty cheap. I think it was like $30 from Uline. Highly recommend you gear up when you make this stuff because it is a lot of fun, but once it becomes a business and you're doing it all the time, you really want to protect yourself. You say take me on a treasure hunt I long for something new Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance I mentioned that I use only a little bit of bath bomb dye to color my essential oil bath bombs because I don't want it to be about the color, I want it to be about the essential oil. I usually use about a quarter teaspoon amount of bath bomb dye to color an entire mix, but for today I'm only going to be using half of that, so I guess the proper measurement would be about an eighth of a teaspoon. And I'm going to put that into a few grams of water, and then I'm not going to add any hot water because I don't want the color to be super intense. I want it to be more of a pale yellow color, and I'm going to add that diluted bath bomb dye straight into my baking soda. KitchenAid is set on the lowest setting. It's going to continue doing that the entire time. Now going to measure out and add to that bowl of mixing baking soda, cream of tartar, cow and clay, and SLSA. And this is where this guy comes in because I do not want to be breathing in SLSA. It makes you sneeze. dry ingredients and this mask does an amazing job of blocking out that SLSA so definitely think it's a good buy. 
And now I'm going to be adding all of my wet ingredients and that includes my shea butter, which I'm going to melt down in the microwave until it's liquid form, my hemp seed oil, my alcohol, my polysorbate 80, and my fragrance oil. And all of that is gonna go into the same beaker and I'm going to chuck it into the KitchenAid and it's all gonna mix together. added all of our wet ingredients. The last ingredient to add in is our citric acid, which we will be doing that. I'll be wearing my protective gear as I pour it because citric acid can make you sneeze and can't irritate your airways. So keep that in mind when you're making bath bombs. So we have this gorgeous pale yellow color and we are now ready to split up the batch into two and the secondary color i'm going to be adding a little bit of green so that we don't get a pure yellow color in the bath water we don't want that so i will show you how i do that right now So I have wet both my yellow side and my green side and for essential oil bath bombs because like I mentioned the focus is not on coloring the bathtub or a big fun water display I actually don't even use embeds in my essential oil bath bomb so that's all about the scent of the essential oil and just that experience so today it'll just be my regular bath bomb mix and just some calendula petals on top. Super simple, but such a beautiful bath bomb. Here comes the pressing.
So I've just finished pressing the lemongrass bath bombs and oh my gosh, my kitchen smells amazing. I will get back to you tomorrow when I actually demo one of these guys in the water and you get to see how these beautiful bath bombs perform and if it really makes a difference in terms of bath bomb color when you use just a little bit versus my regular amount that I use. So stay tuned for that and I will see you tomorrow. Hey guys, it is the next day and the lemongrass bath bombs are dry. So I'm gonna show you how they turned out, but also I'm gonna give you guys a treat. I'm gonna show you how they perform in water. I have my tub ready over there and can't wait to show you. So you can see how the bath bomb turned out. It is this beautiful light yellow color and below there is the green right there. It's very faint. Yeah, when it comes to essential oil bath bombs, I like them to be pale like this. And here are the calendula petals on top. It just looks so, so cute and so beautiful. You don't need a lot, just a pinch. Let's uh, demo this guy. <laughs> here here is a demo of lemongrass bath bombs. So that was the demo of our lemongrass bath bombs. As you can see, the color is a lot more subtle than my more fruitier, fun type bath bombs. And it's one of those bath bombs that you want to use if you're just wanting to relax and completely unwind and not be distracted by a whole bunch of colors, but letting the scent of lemongrass just soothe your soul. If you like this kind of video, please leave it a thumbs up. I really hope you guys learned a lot of things like how to use essential oils in your bath bombs. And if you want to learn more, please subscribe. And for everyone who already subscribed we are getting closer and closer to 16,000 that is mind-blowing you guys know how amazed I am and how much I appreciate each and every one of you thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video keep smiling and keep having a great time making bath bombs have fun and I will see you in the next one bye guys